So we'll cross live now to Abuja for the 28th Nigerian Economic Summit, where national and global leaders uh, in government, business, politics, and development are deliberating on the theme 2023 and beyond, priorities for shared prosperity. Uh, let's take a listen to Pascal Dozier, uh, an industry name in the banking industry uh, of the NESG. Positive and practical terms. Three, we must be a federation, not just in name, but also in nature and in deed. In line with more successful, enduring and plural nation states, including such countries like the US, UK, Canada, India, Brazil, Nigeria must strive to shape legislative lists and powers to make laws such as to have relevant tiers of government to be responsible for those issues that they, the tiers of government, are best suited for. It therefore follows that the exclusive, concurrent, and residual list in the Constitution needs reworking for a more efficient and effective federation. Four, ours is an economy that urgently needs a positive regulatory environment that is private sector and business enhancing. We can't overestimate the need for this. Because one of the things you find in, if friends ask you, if, what are the key possible determinants or that create problems for Nigerian private sector. It is uncertainty. uncertainty. Uncertainties in the system. It is also the regulatory problems. Our regulators should think of themselves people who are meant to enhance the development of the private sector and not like people waiting for somebody to air and then you strike. It therefore behoves the government to depersonalize institutions by leveling the playing field and making it attractive to investments, both local and foreign. This depersonalization of Nigerian institutions is very key because if you don't depersonalize, I think we should be process-led and not just determined by individuals. It pre presents uncertainty in the economy. Our education system needs to unify and not divide and must meet development challenges of the 21st century. The current figure of 20 million out-of-school children are time bombs that are already detonating. This can be seen from egregiously high crime rates and various conflicts bedeviling the economy. So, how do we begin to reverse the trend? And how do we recover, train, and equip those that have passed the former school age to be productive and fend for themselves. This must be in the front burner of leaders come 2023. Experience also informs us that curricula for schools is much more important in nation building than the ownership of education organizations. For instance, we need to find better ways to institutionalize affirmative actions to lift the vulnerable and less endowed as against the current unity schools system, which implementation now has the unintended consequence of dividing instead of unifying family groups and Nigerians. Equally important is the question how do we structure our school curricula to be more amenable to science, technology, engineering, and mathematics?
fondly called STEM, are judged variable drivers of the 21st century economic development. Six, we must deploy more inclusive and development enabling institutions over economic extractive ones. Whereas inclusive institutions, including land titles and vulnerable groups and social safety nets for the poor, bestow equal rights and enable equal opportunities, voice and access to resources. Extractive economic institutions permit the elite to rule over, exploit and extract wealth from those who are not in the elite. In the circumstances, the EEIs, that is ex extractive economic institutions, stymie national cohesion and development with attendant debilitating effects on social cohesion and development. Arguably, the most debilitating economic extractive institution arrived Nigeria in 1978 via the Land Use Decree. Subsequently, the Land Use Act. Ever since an avowed public good intention has had the unintended consequence of imbuing the elite, including state governors and power, powerful people, to take over and allocate private and communal lands to themselves and their cronies. In the process, citizens are denied their heritage with attendant negative impact on agriculture by small and community holder farms, poverty alleviation, and wealth creation, all to the detriment of economic development and social cohesion. In the circumstance, after over four decades of unintended negative consequences, the time is ripe for a comprehensive review of the, and amendment of the Land Use Act. I'm happy we have some of our legislators in this forum, and I think they should study it and see whether my opinion is correct or not. The detriment it has caused and continue to cause in Nigeria. Seven, our policy, ours is a policy that's crying for urgent solution to the insecurity bedeviling this country. As a fundamental principle of nationhood, regardless of the cost, we must deal with threats to our national security, violence, attacks, terrorism, war, espionage in a smart, transparent, accountable, and coordinated manner. Eight, Nigerian leaders and citizens must appreciate the very fact that whereas economic and social infrastructure, electricity, transportation, water, housing, health, and the like play important roles in catalyzing development, freedom of choice and associated soft issues are inalienable rights and therefore central to human development and sustenance. Very often we don't play the, social, the soft issues, but they are very important in determining the cohesion and the well meaning in the development of a nation. For instance, despite the best intentions of Colonel Gaddafi's Libya, where among other freebies, electricity was available everywhere and free, home ownership was a human right and was provided, education and health care were available and free, farmland was available for free for agriculture, the Great Man-Made River Project, the world's largest irrigation project, 
made water available free to citizens. Even so, the regime ended violently. One may argue that this was not totally internal and there were other exogenous factors. But the rest couldn't have happened. This couldn't have happened if the citizens were very happy. Citizens were happy and therefore they could have played into the hands of foreigners who didn't want the regime to continue. The rest is negative or positive reminiscence depending on which side of the divide one appreciates. Nine and finally, I therefore like to conclude by reiterating that the Nigeria we need is one which was ambitioned, negotiated, and agreed upon by our founding fathers, to wit, a democratic, federal, secular Nigerian nation state, in which relevant groups mutually agree on rules of engagement on an equal kill, where ethnic groups may differ, but respect and harness the good in each other, which we hand over to our children by teaching them the truth about our history in a nation state where no one is oppressed and our young ones will no longer be forced by circumstances like in the old house to wander and scatter or as they say now to Shaba. So help us God. Yes, uh, that was uh, Dr. Pascal Dose, uh, the pioneer uh, president of the Nigeria Economic Summit Group, who was also a banker, a former president of the Nigerian Stock Exchange, and a well-renowned name in Nigeria's uh, uh, financial services sector, including telecommunications. Uh, they're speaking to issues relating to the future of Nigeria 2023 and beyond. Dr. Opaska Adoze making those very uh, great remarks there and in his presentation to start this two-day event of the Nigerian 28th edition of the Nigerian Economic uh, Summit. It's the greatest of all time. And I looked at him a bit frail but the voice resonates. So doctors say anything can age your body, but the voice remains evergreen. May God bless you, sir. I'd like to welcome Dr. Mohammed Mahmoud Abubakar, Honorable Minister of Agriculture and Rural Development. I welcome you, sir. And also here with us is a banker, philanthropist, investor, and founder of the Aigboje Aigimokwede Foundation. Mr. Aigboje Aigimokwede, you're welcome too. I welcome you. So without much ado, let me welcome members of the panel. Our moderator is the Senior Program Officer, MacArthur Foundation, Nigeria, Dr. Amina Salil. These are members of the panel, the Honorable Minister of Finance, Budget and National Planning, Dr. Mrs. Zainab Ahmed, will be joining us on the panel now. The President and Founder, ANAP Foundation. Um